Okay, so uh, example number two, uh, we have F1 of 250 newtons, F2 of 50 newtons, and F3 of 120 newtons, and the angle shown in the picture, A. Find the resultant or the net, uh, net force or total force, uh, magnitude and direction. So what we have is we have an F2 of 250. So this one is, 250 newtons okay this one is uh it's actually this one is 250 okay and f2 is 50 newtons and f3 is 120. so i only will break those apart they're not along x and y for example f2 that's already along the x direction i am not you know, touching it. F3, which is already along the negative y direction, I am not dealing with it at all. I am now going to break F1 into its components. So F1 of X is F1 cosine of 53, okay? And F1 of Y, of Y direction, is F1 sine of 53 degrees. Okay, so um, F1 is 250 newtons, cosine of 53 degrees. Now let's, let's take a look to see what that number is. Okay, so cosine is 0.6, so 250 times 0.6, and here I have 250 times sine of 53, which is 0.8. So I have, let's see, 250 times 6 over 10. So this 0 and this 0 will cancel out. Then I have 6 times 25, which is 150. And then I have A times here, the same uh, type, A times 25 is 200. So I have a vector of 150 I hat, or along X direction, and uh, 200 newtons along the J hat direction. Now, be careful. This X hat is along the negative X hat direction, so I have to apply the negative here. Okay, so negative 150 along the I direction. Now, that's, that's all I need to do because the rest of the other two vectors are already along X and Y. So along X direction, I have 50 plus 50I, negative 150J, sorry, negative 150I hat, which means along I, I have negative 100 I hat. And along Y direction, I have positive 200 I hat, negative 120, sorry, J hat, negative 200 J hat, which means I have positive AD along the J hat direction. So that is the vector R or F net. Okay, if I want to write it down, I'll write it like this. Negative 100 I hat direction plus AD J hat direction. Okay, so that's what I have here. Uh, now, if I want to find the magnitude of it, the magnitude of R or the magnitude of F net is AD squared plus 100 squared. You know that this is negative 100, but since it's becoming uh, squared, doesn't matter if it's negative or positive at this point. So, which means I have 6400 plus that. Okay. And now if I want to put that under the square root, let's see what I will get. I will get um, 
so one six four zero zero hundred twenty eight ish so the answer is around hundred twenty eight newton so that's the um the net force okay magnitude and direction so what we know is that it is along the negative i hat direction or negative x direction and also along the positive j so i know the tan of theta of the net force is it's y or r sub y over r sub x which means i have 80 over 100 okay which means uh, negative 100 which means it is 8 over 10 okay 8 and 10 will also cancel out and uh, so to the 2 it will give me 4 and to 2 it will give me 5 then theta is 10 negative 1 of negative 4 over 5 and then put it in a calculator to find what it is okay Mass and weight, the weight end of an object on the earth is gravitational force that the earth exerts on it. The weight W of the object of a mass M is mg. So, so weight is different from mass. Mass is universal, does not change. It does not matter where you are, but your weight depends on G, which is the earth gravitational acceleration, okay? So, the value of G depends on the altitude as well. If you really, really uh, go above the uh, earth level or you, uh, you know, sea level, the G will drop. But close to the earth, G is close to 9.81 meters per second square, or G is close to, you know, you can say it's around 10, 10 meters per second square. The other planets, G will have an entirely different value than on the Earth, so your weight will be different. For example, the G on Moon is about one sixth of the G of the Earth. So that means you will you will have less weight if you go to um, if you go to Moon. So do not confuse mass with weight measured in newtons. Commonly interchange weight, weight and mass. I mean, this is something that we do. But everything experiences the same acceleration due to the gravity on it. Everything experiences the same acceleration due to gravity on Earth. Everything, okay? Mass is proportional to the force, as we know, right? Because F equals MA, all of us know that. M, which is the mass, and F are proportional to one another, okay? And your mass is the same on the moon, on Jupiter, on a, another planet, okay? But your weight is different because your weight is different because W is mg and g is different planet to planet, okay? Now, <clears throat> Newton's second law in apparent weight. So, a man is, is in a accelerating elevator, how does his true weight compared to his apparent weight? Draw a free body diagram, which is what we exactly have done here. So we have a force of mg, all right? A force of mg, it's starting from this point, which is the center of the mass of this guy, drawing down to the center of Earth, w equals mg, right? We have a normal force, F of N, because he's standing on a floor. So there's a normal force applied by the floor to his body, upward, F of N. And they usually, if when you're sitting on a, a chair, when you are standing without moving, usually, most of the time, at a stationary position, F of N should be equal to MG. So that's why you're not moving along the Y direction, okay? Usually when you're staying, you're not flying upward. You're not a rocket because all the uh, forces along the Y direction are canceling out, okay? So which means that if the elevator is not moving, then F of N equals MG, okay? 
But in this case, it is accelerating, either going up or down. So let's take a look. So we have a man in the accelerating elevator, as we said. So sum of the, all the forces along the y direction should be equal to ma. So as we know, sigma f equals ma. Along the y direction, what do we have? We have f of n, which is upward. We have mg, which is downward along the negative. So minus mg equals ma. Okay. And then I can just move this guy. I can move this guy with its negative sign all the way to the other side. So what I have then is this, f of n equals ma plus mg, which means f of n is, I can factor out m, and then I have g plus a, okay? That's what I have. So, so kind of writing it like that, if I, I see I moved the negative mg over, so it's not positive mg, then I factor out m. So it looks like this. And if a is positive, let me actually write it down one more time here. f of n equals m g plus a, right? So when you're looking at this, if a is positive, a is positive, meaning that along the positive direction, along the y direction, positive direction, if a is positive, all right, that means that f of n is more than uh, mg. So if a is positive, then f of n is greater than mg. It means you feel heavier when the elevator starts to go up. Okay, just think about it. You are in a ground floor, you want to go to the fifth floor, for example, and you, you, know, you know, as soon as you press the button and the door closes, as soon as the elevator is going up, you feel a little bit heavy. Okay, so that's what they, we call in the apparent magnitude. If A is negative, it's going along the negative direction, so it is negative A, all right? Then F of N is less than Mg, okay? So you feel a little bit lighter. So if the elevator moves downward, his apparent weight is less than the true weight. You know that the mg is the true weight, right? Okay, so mg is true weight and um, apparent weight is fn, okay? So fundamental forces, last part of our uh, chapter, um, fundamental forces or all action at the distance. So strong force and nuclear force keeps proton and neutrons together in the nucleus. Uh, electric forces acts on the uh, charged particles, for example, negative and positive are, you know, attracting one another or two positives are repairing, repelling. Uh, we have weak forces or responsible for radioactivity of, for example, molecules. We have gravitational forces or for, uh, forces felt because of the mass of bodies, for example, Earth applying the gravitational force on your body or Earth applying the, gravi the same gravitational type of force on the moon or you know, other planets. And non-fundamental forces are forces that can be explained by a fundamental force, okay? So they are, for example, contact forces, long range forces, for example, like weight or gravitational pull between two bodies as we just talked about. So contact forces, the contact forces that requires two objects to be contact with one another. Frictional force acts plural to the surface in the opposite or opposed motion, uh, in the opposite side of a direction. A normal force acts perpendicular to the surface. We talked about it, um, you know, in this chapter. Prevents the passage of two objects through each other. For example, when you're staying or when a box is staying on a surface, there is a force of gravity, which we know it's mg now, okay? Let's say that this is our box, and then we know that mg, or weight, is down. And then, so there is a normal force because it's staying on a surface, normal force, normal to the surface, okay? 
normal to surface. This is important. And then we have tension forces. So tension forces are pulling force exerted an object by a rope or a cord. So these are the forces that we have. So a typical forces magnitude, this is not something that you have to remember, but I mean, this is something that we have here presented in the chapter. So sun's gravitational force on earth is 3.5 times 10 to the 22 newtons. When on a medium apple, when you go to a grocery store and you get an apple, it's like one newton. And remember, weight is now, this is something that people get a lot confused about, but weight of a medium apple is a force by the gravity, okay? It's mass, mass of the apple times the gravity of the Earth, which is uh, gravitational acceleration of the Earth, which is 9.81 meters per second square. And for an apple, it is about one Newton, okay? Weight of a hydrogen atom, which is 1.6 10 to negative six, significantly a small gravitational attraction between the proton and an electron in hydrogen atom is 3.8 six times 10 to the negative 47 Newton. Um, this is a number that a lot of physical students just have in mind. Um, let's take a look at the, another uh, example. Three blocks are sitting next to each other and touching. So we have three blocks. Let me see if I can draw one. So three blocks kind of like that. One, two, and three, I'm kind of touching one another. And then I have a floor, okay, kind of like this. Let me see if I can move these stuff. Oh, maybe that one over here, this one over here, and this one right there. Well, so we have two, uh, three boxes, uh, as you can see here. And then, so block A has a mass of three kilograms. So that's block A, mass of three kilograms. So M of A is three. I'm not gonna write kilogram because I'm dealing with them in a small area here, but you have to write it. Um, and it's left of the system. Block B has a mass of five kilograms. So M of B is five, five kilograms. Uh, and in the middle, and block C has a mass of seven kilograms and it's in the right. So M of C, I have enough space here, so seven kilograms. So A, B, C, boom. A force of 12 Newton is applied to the block A to push it to the right. So I have a, I have a, ma a force of 12. Um, let's actually we'll change the length of it a little bit change its color a little bit. So I have a force of how much? 12 Newtons, thanks. 12 Newtons right there. Being applied to, um, to these three boxes. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is what is the acceleration of the blocks, all right? We can get that very easily. And what are the connect contact forces between blocks A, B, and B, C? Okay, so let's take a look. First of all, I want to find the uh, you know acceleration. We know that right now we have a 12 Newton applied on the, these boxes. And if these boxes are, if this 12 Newton is strong enough to move these boxes, we know that they're all gonna move together, okay? It's not like, Block A is moving and block C doesn't want to move, okay? This system, this system is going with one acceleration. They're all moving with the same acceleration, right? So what we have here is that F equals MA, but this is a system of three objects moving as, at the same time. So I can consider this as only one object. So in other words, I have F equals M of A plus M of B plus M of C times A or 12 is, so let's see, three plus five plus seven times A, and I can find A to be 12 over 
three plus five um, plus 12, which is, oh no, actually three plus five plus seven. See how easy I can make a mistake. If that happens to me, it can happen to, to you as well. So that's why I always encourage students to go over the answer a couple times. So, so isn't it um, 15? So 12 or 15, right? Or if I, uh, three, let's see, five, four over five, four point eight. Okay, so that's the acceleration meters per second square. All right, and um, so I have that, and then we know that. Why did we one more time? What we what? Why did we put M A M B and M C all together here? Because it when these these objects are moving, it looks like that they are moving at the same acceleration. So I can treat that problem with as if I had only one object there with the total mass combined. Okay, it's literally the same thing. Now, when you're looking at this, object A is applying FA to B to object B, and object B is applying the same to object A. For every action, there's a reaction, F B to A, okay? Object B is applying F B to C to the big box, but C is applying the same thing. So F C to B is right there, okay? So what we're looking for is now to find the, these contact forces. Okay, we know the acceleration is the same, right? So we know F A to B equals M A, okay? So F A to B, this F A to B is responsible for how many uh, blocks in front of it? Two blocks, right? M of B and M of C. So this is M of B plus M of C times A, okay? So F of A B equals to, um, if I add these two, I will have two, uh, five plus, five plus seven, which is 12, times 0.8. Okay, so I will have, uh, let's see, am I using a calculator? I am not, I don't wanna use the calculator, so I will have that. So I have five, and uh, four times 12 is 48, right? And 48 divided by five. All I need to do is to have calculation like that. So 48 divided by five. Let me actually check it with my calculator to see I'm not making any mistakes. 48 divided by five is giving me 9.86. So that's right. Now, why did I put only two masses here, MB and MC? Take a look. Uh, F A to B is being applied from A to these to this object, but it is responsible for moving not only B but also but also C. So it's responsible for how many uh, boxes that is in front of the force. So let me add a little bit of a text here. Okay, you should care about the forces that are in front of, you should care about the boxes that are in front of the force or the force is acting to move them, okay? So if I want to find, right now, based on what I just wrote, if I want to find F of 
B on C, I know it's MA if equals MA as always, F of B on C is how many mass or how many boxes do I have in front of F, B on C? I have only one box here, seven kilogram. So I have M of C times A, so F of B, C equals um, F of B, C equals seven times 0 0.8, which means 5.6 newtons. And they are all newtons, so I have to put the appropriate unit for it, okay? Now, uh, why didn't I put all of these forces, FAB and FBC, when I was dealing with this? Why, did I, why didn't I do that? Why didn't I put sigma F here? Okay, why didn't I, why didn't I put FAB or FBA? And because as I, as if you remember when we were talking about this, these are all internal forces, okay? These are all internal forces that they will cancel out and they will not stay. Okay, so what, what I have is that these are action reaction pairs that will cancel out, okay? You don't want to include the internal forces or the forces produced by objects. But if you want to go specifically and focus on only one of these objects, then you have to consider the internal forces as, as what we did here. Okay, so let's take a look at example number four. Newton's second law, finding the acceleration. An application of the Atwood machine is shown to the right. A block with mass two kilogram is at rest on a smooth inclined plane and is connected to an object with mass five kilogram as shown. So. So this object mass, which I'm just gonna call it object one. So let's see, object one or M1 here is two kilogram. Okay. And it is at rest, all right. And connected to another object of mass, five kilograms. So I'm just gonna call it object two. So M2 is five kilograms. The rope may be considered massless and the pulley may be considered massless and frictionless, all right? If the angle of incline is 23 degrees, so this angle is 23 degrees right there, what is the acceleration of the system? All right, what is the acceleration of the system? The first thing we need to do is to draw all the forces that are applying. So I have an, an, uh, a, you actually get this a little, maybe a little bit bigger, but don't worry about it. So I have a force of gravity down there. Let me go ahead and change its color. So a force of gravity down here, boom. And then I have a, another force of rope applied to this object by the rope, All right? I have a force of gravity applying to that object, I have a force of normal force, normal to the surface, so the surface is inclined, that's why my force is also inclined, like that. I have a rope force right there, and that's all I have, okay? So if I wanted to write them down, I would have M1G, M2G, force of the rope, force of the rope, and I have normal force, which I'm just gonna show it as N. Okay, so that's the first step. The second step was to uh, divide, to break down forces with, uh, you know, break down forces to their components. If they are not along X and Y, we have to break down them. For each object, if they are not lying in the same coordinate system, we have to consider a coordinate system for them. So for this, uh, for this object right there, for object two, the coordinate system for me would be something like this, X and Y. But for this object, I will have a different coordinate system, X and Y. Okay, so 
If that's the case, I have to kind of get rid of mg, m1g here, okay? So on object one, I would have All right, let's see. Okay. So on object one, I have mg down here, and that's theta, right? And that this is our theta. I have f of robe or R right down there. And I have F of N right there, okay? Okay, so I have my X that direction, and I have my Y in this direction right there. Okay, so what I have here is, this is my X, and this is my Y. All right now when you're looking at this which forces are not along x and y okay and it's only mg so you have to get rid of it so if you do that if you want to do that i can get it um to mg cosine theta and that's the theta of the inclined angle and mg sine theta okay you don't have to drive this any every time an exam or you know on a homework just remember it the force that is pushing the object down the hill is mg sine theta the force that is pushing an object down the hill is mg sine theta so if you're walking on a you know inclined surface and you're getting tired because there is a force of mg sine theta pulling you down okay so it's pushing you down kind of like that and there is an mg cosine theta pressing you to the ground. So have that, have this in mind. Now I got rid of mg, so I can just delete it, or I can just you know raise it. Now what you have, we know that all the time, normal forces or forces that are perpendicular will cancel out. So in other words, F of N is always mg cosine theta, okay? So that's what we know. And let's see which one is bigger. Let's see if I have M2G down here, these uh, F of R or the um, force produced by the R are internal forces for this system. So they will cancel out. And then down here, I have mg sine theta, m1g, by the way. So these are m1. This is m1, not m2 or anything. This is m1, okay, m1g. So let's see which one is bigger, mg, m1g sine theta is bigger or m2g, okay? Now, if you do that, let's see, M1 is two kilogram, G is 9.81, sine of theta is sine of 23 degrees. So sine of 23 degrees, let's see which one is bigger. M2 is five kilogram, G is 9.81, okay? So I recorded this um, on my calculator. Let's see, so this one is 7.66. This one is 49.05. So obviously this one is bigger, which means these two F of R's are canceling out, right? I have an M2G of around 50 or uh, 49.5 so this one is 49 okay or it is a big one but then this one causes by mg sine theta is only seven so this whole system is moving in 
this direction. Okay. Now, we're looking for the acceleration at this point. So it's important to see what direction is, it's moving. <clears throat> F equals MA. Now, F, let's see. We have F of R is canceling F of R. They are internal forces. N is being canceled. This F of N or normal force is being canceled by M1G cosine theta. What else do I have left? I have M1G sine and I have M2G. So I have M2G minus M1G sine theta equals M1 plus M2A. Okay, F equals MA. How many a M do we have? Two, M1 and M2. They're both moving, so we have to consider both masses. So M2G minus M1G sine theta, um, M1 plus M2A. So now I have calculated those. This one is 49.05. The other one is 7.66 equals m1 plus m2 one of them is five the other one is two kilograms so five plus two a is the missing one so a is 49.05 minus 7.66 divided by seven is 5.9 so I have, if I calculate A, I have 49.05 minus 7.66 divided by seven. My calculator gave me 5.9 meters per second square. So remember the procedure. The procedure here was first, draw a free body diagram for each object. For this object, I have F of R by the rope and M2G down. For this object, I have mg down to the ground, to the center of Earth. I have a normal force from the surface, normal to the surface, okay? My surface is inclined, so that's why the normal force is inclined. And then I have an F of R. In order to find the acceleration, I have to know which direction this system is moving. Is it moving to the right or is it moving to the left? So I have to know which object is winning in this game, all right? In order to do that, I also have to get rid of all the forces that are, or break, out, uh, break to the components, the forces that are not along X and Y. So if I consider this to be X axis for this object and this to be the Y axis for this object, F of R along the X, F of N along the Y, but this MG is not along X or Y. So that's why I have to get rid of it and I have to break it apart to these, to these pieces. So this is the theta, the same theta that we have here. Okay, this is the same theta that we have here. You have to remember that. All right. <clears throat> and then if you do that, M1G cosine theta will be going down and M1G sine theta will be going to the negative x direction. Now, remember that all the times, all the normal forces are canceling out. So f of n and mg cosine theta will cancel out. Now we have to know that f of, f of r and f of r will also cancel out because they are internal forces. The only thing left is m1g down here, okay, m1g down here, and m2g. So we have to know which one is winning. We have to know which one is the, the bigger one. I calculated both and I found that m2g is the bigger one. So we have more force down here than down here. In other words, it's moving along this green arrow that I put here, right? So if I do that, then I write down the Newton's second law, F equals MA, M2G minus M1G sine equals M1 plus M2. Remember, we have two masses. They all move, both moving together as a one mass. And then I just substitute the numbers that I had and find the A right there, all right? So I'm gonna stop right now, and uh, this is the end of part three and for this chapter.